In today's tutorial, we will create three backgrounds, this printed blue background, this gray background, and this red background. We will do it all from scratch. Let's get started. Hello my friends, today I am so excited, I am going to show you how I make my backgrounds. There's many many ways to make a background, I will show you three different ways that you can do from really really easy and very very affordable, to a little bit more complicated but still very affordable. So this is a background that I did and this is the props that I did to match. I do like to make my backgrounds and my props matching, it makes it so much easier for product photography. Now today we will be making the backgrounds and I will make a red one and maybe maybe we'll do, we'll do three of them all together. We'll see what we can come up with. But this is one that I've done a few weeks ago. I just wanted to show you guys before we start. I'm going to put this away and then I will start talking about the easiest way to make a background. If you've ever bought a background like this, this particular one is from Replica Surfaces. Then you will know that a small background like this retails for $80. $80 it's a lot for a small background like this. I will show you today how to create this background for less than $12. And then I will also show you two other backgrounds, um, way to make backgrounds that are my favorite and I think it gives you even a better result. But we'll start with this one because it's the easiest one to make and then we'll go in the garage and I will show you my favorite ways. Now this background if you look um, closely at it. What it is, is just a tempered um, hardboard. You can buy this tempered hardboard at the Home Depot for about $7 for a piece that is 2 feet by 4 feet. So $7 piece will create two of these backgrounds. Now to, to get this design on top of it, what they are using is contact paper. Contact paper comes in a row like this and there's different kinds of contact paper. Now what you need in order to create that background is your tempered hardboard and then you need some sort of contact paper. Contact paper comes in a row like this with all kinds of different prints and there's different kind of contact paper when you look online you'll find that this contact paper that is called wallpaper that you put on your walls. This particular one it's meant to go inside, inside the drawers and I bought it for my nephew's um, desk that I finished and I put this inside the drawers but then you can buy a special kind of contact paper I'll put it in the description below it's a contact paper that is meant for um, your kitchen counters and like kitchen cabinets something that has really high traffic and it's very very durable this contact paper it's uh, waterproof and stain resistant and you can wipe it so it's a very very good one for making backgrounds you also can find wallpaper and you're, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with wallpaper. I have two boards in here that I just use wallpaper on top of foam board. I made these black ones because I like to have a little bit of texture and some shine to it. So I made two of them. So I have one as a base and one as a background. And this is just white foam board that I bought from the dollar store and some black wallpaper on top of it. So those are two that I made. Now that we looked at the replica surfaces one, I want to show you this other one. This particular one I just bought on Amazon, was very cheap. I bought it many years ago when I started photography. And this one, it's made out of foam board and it has the same contact paper, but this one is in a print of a white wood. I do not have any of the tempered hardboard, uh, the one that I told you about. I will have all the links in the description below. But I do have some white foam board. It's kind of wrinkled and stuff, but it doesn't matter. And I do have this contact paper. I'm just going to show you really quickly how to apply contact paper to your board. So we'll do this method first, then we'll go in the garage, like I said, and I will show you my other two methods. I'm going to bring my camera closer to me just so you can see better. And by the way, today's videos, I'm filming it all onto my iPhone with my new Ulanzi microphone. I need to make a review on this microphone and I am working on it but I'm just testing it out first because I want to make sure that it's really good before I review it and tell you guys about it. So what I'm doing now I just wanted to measure and cut my contact paper and I'm going to put my foam board on top of the paper. The paper is hard to work with because it wants to roll but I'll just roughly place it like this 
and then I'll make a mark saying, okay, this is kind of where I need to be. Once I mark my contact paper, the contact paper comes with these lines, so it's really easy to cut straight. So I'm going to cut my piece that will fit onto my foam board. I'm just going to cut it roughly. There you go. Now to apply this contact paper, it is very, very easy. What I'm going to do is just kind of place it on top of my board. And this is not the pattern I will ever use for product photography or food photography. This is just what I had on hand and to show you how to apply it. And the way you apply it is you peel it. This is just like a sticker. And you start from a corner. So I will place my corner there. And then from the underneath, I will slowly pull the paper and make sure that there's no bubbles in there. And if you make a mistake, you can kind of peel it back and then retry it again. And I'll try to go maybe to the end of this and then just kind of work it. I do have some bubbles in it, but when you do it, take your time and make sure that you have no bubbles into your contact paper. If you end up with some bubbles that you absolutely cannot get out while you are applying it, you can take a sharp needle and just kind of poke them and get the air out. And that should do a pretty decent job. Now I'm doing a terrible job in here. And I do have some bubbles. But you get the gist, this is how you would do it. And then you cut off the excess paper or roll it under, whichever one you prefer. You can just roll it under and you get like clean edges like this. So this is the cheapest way to create a background and contact paper comes in all kinds of prints. They come in like wood prints, tiles, marbles, and so on. So it makes it really, really easy to create um, custom backgrounds. Now that we saw this method, let's go to the garage and move on to my favorite methods. So this one, this whole board, it cost us $12 if we are using the tempered hardboard. We just use a foam board, so it really didn't cost us much of anything. Now we are in my garage. The temperature outside is about 35 degrees, so we will work indoors today. Uh, my favorite material for background is MDF. MDF stands for medium density fiber board. And this is a half an inch MDF board. Now this MDF board I bought from my local Home Depot. When I bought it, it was a piece that was two feet by four feet. And I asked them there to cut it in a half for me. And I ended up with two of these pieces. And the two by four piece at my local Home Depot, it cost me $23. So for $23, I got two pieces that is a half an inch thick. Now, if this is too heavy for you or you do not need a half an inch, you can go even cheaper if you go to the quarter inch MDF boards. And those for a two by four uh, feet, it will cost you only $12. So it will be $6 per background if you go with the quarter inch uh, thickness. Now, another material for making background is plywood and i have here an eighth of an inch you see it's very bendy very thin just piece of plywood and this i purchased at my local home depot and i paid 18 dollars for two by four feet and the same thing i had them cut it in half so i ended up with two pieces and um, this is not my favorite i prefer mdf so much better it's sturdier and it's a little bit smoother so it just gives you a you know smoother nicer look but we will use this today for a um, texture background 
and then we'll use the MDF piece for a very smooth background. So we'll do two different ones so you can see the difference and see which one works for you. So I'm going to put this one right here. Let's start, let's start with the MDF piece because that is my favorite. So I have my MDF piece and I'm going to show you a lot of products and a lot of materials and I will tell you which ones you absolutely need and which ones you really don't need or you know it would be nice to have but you don't need them so I'm choosing to paint this side even though it still has the sticker there I will paint on this side to me it just feels nicer to the touch so look at your piece decide which side you want to use the next thing to know is when they cut the piece in a half one of the edges was very very rough so I had to sand it down a little bit I did use my orbital sander but you do not need to use an orbital sander. What you can use is just a piece of um, sanding material. They come in circle like this. This is from my orbital sander. Or they also come in big sheets like this. If you are new to sanding and you do not know how to read the sanding material, let me just show you. You see they have numbers on the bottom. And this one is an 80 grit, that means it's very coarse. The higher the number, like this one, is a 150, that means it's smoother. It's a finer grit. And then the one on top, I believe, it's a 220. So this is a very fine grit and it gives you a smoother surface. So this is how to read your sanding paper and what you want to do you want to cut a piece that you need and you want to wrap it around a sponge this is a sanding sponge because if you just use your piece of paper sanding and you use your fingers your fingers are not evenly pushing on the board so you will get a little bit unevenness so i like to cut a piece just cut a piece that you need i'll just use this round one and i just wrap it around my sanding sponge and then i just sponge and you know sand the edges as needed for this particular board i already sanded the edges so they're all smooth and nice so i do not need to do this when you are sanding make sure you use a dust mask and then some safety glasses now i'm going to bring the camera a lot closer so i can show you exactly what i'm doing and pro products i'm using now, once you have your board, you smoothed your edges. If you want to smooth them, you don't have to. You can leave them uh, rough. It's time to apply a primer. Now, primers come in many shapes and forms. Here is a few of them that I have in my garage. This one is called Sticks, and this is a binding primer. Its main property is to make sure that creates um, bonding between your, your uh, board and your paint. So this will make sure that everything sticks together and it's a great one to use on laminated surfaces, on glass, on plastic and stuff that are very shiny and stick and the paint will not stick otherwise. So this what this one is for. This um, Zinser Bullseye 123 primer, this is a great all around primer and I would use this for any kind of project. It's kind of like, you know, my go to when it comes to any small projects. This one over here, this one, it's called the Smart Primer. And this one, it's um, meant to use when you're working with raw wood that might have some oils in it that will come to the surface. Those are called tenons. And this will block those oil stains coming out of your uh, surface. So this is what that, this primer does. For our background, any of these primers will work. So it doesn't matter which one you use, they will all be fine. You can also buy primers and spray can if it's easier for you to spray. Make sure you use it outside or in a well-ventilated area. I'm working in my garage today. Like I said, it's very cold outside, so I'm not going to use this primer. I will just use one of these guys and I will just paint it onto my board. I decided for this project where I will go with this primer, the one, two, three bullseye primer. And um, just to note, I like working with uh, water-based products. So my, all my primers, all my paints, and all my top coats, they are all water-based. They dry faster, they have less smell, and I just like working with them so much better. So I'm going to open the can over here. And as you can see, it is white inside. 
one other thing I need for this is to get some gloves because, you know, I don't want to get all messy here. So I am putting on my gloves. And then the first thing you need to do, make sure you really stir your primer, primer, paint, anything you're working with, make sure it's really mixed in. Especially if you had it sit around in your garage or the attic or whatever for a long time, it tends to separate and all the pigment goes to the bottom and funky things are happening. So make sure you give it a nice stir. This one, it's not too bad, so I'll just go with that. Now let's see what we are doing. I'm going to go pick a brush for this. For the brush, I am just going to use one of these synthetic brushes. You can totally use a roller. Let me just show you something in here. You can use a roller for your project. If you decide to use a roller, make sure you get one of these um, trays that you can roll into it. That will come in really handy. If you are working with the brush, then one of these containers comes in handy because you can have the paint over there and then your brush can rest over here. And it just makes it like a lot easier to work with. Now for this project, I'm not gonna use any of that. I will just paint straight from the can. Make sure you have some mixing sticks. And let's get right into it. Let's paint this primer on. I'm just going to get the paint from my stick. My primer, really, it's not paint, it's primer. And just put a very thin coat all over my board. You see, you guys, I don't take a lot of primer on my brush, just a little bit, and just work it in. Make sure you get it nice, even, thin coat. It shouldn't take long. It's really easy process. Just thinly paint it in. If I can do this, you can do this, anybody can do this. It's really not hard. Now we have to set this aside and wait for it to dry. So in the meantime, we will get ready the next board, which will be our texture background. Now a little trick that I have for you is, because I know I will, I will need to use this uh, brush with my primer later, so I will just wrap it in aluminum foil or plastic and put it aside and this will keep it from drying out and it can hold out for a few hours until I will need it again. We're starting with our texture background. A um, tool that will make this easier for you is these little triangles. They are meant for painting and they are very, very affordable. I'll put the link in the description below. And these triangles will help us elevate our piece because otherwise when I will get with my brush to the edge, I will get paint all over my table. So I'll just put these triangles right under my piece. And then we will get to work. Move them a little bit more to the outer edge. Let's see, something like this. Great. Now we need to create our texture and I will show you what we will use to create texture. When it comes to creating texture on our boards, there's two materials we can use. This one, it's a tile adhesive. This is what they put your tiles in in your kitchen and bathroom and stuff. And it has like a paste texture. And then we can also use a joint compound. Now this joint compound, it's like very cheap at your local store. It's about $3 or so. And this big bucket of tile adhesive, it's about, I don't know, $17 or something like that. So get yourself a top of this joint compound. The difference between the joint compound and tile adhesive, joint compound is basically a drywall. So you can sand it down if you need to, 
and you know it's, it's a little bit softer maybe easier to work with where the tile adhesive dries down to a very hard surface like cement so let's take our joint compound and we will start creating a texture on our board now you see the joint compound is very gooey like i said it's like pasty so get some of that paste and start applying a thin layer over your board and keep applying it until you completely fill your board but very thin layer nothing too thick if you go too thick like a quarter inch or a half inch you might get cracks into it so keep working it go side to side up and down until you slide you cover your board it's, if you see some of the wood through it it's okay but you want to have a thin layer kind of everywhere and one of these small containers of uh, joint compound will last you for to make i don't know like eight backgrounds or something so they last for a while you don't need that much now i have a smaller one of these scrapers just to get into there better and this is where you create your textures just keep on working it move it around left and right up and down I usually just like a little bit of texture I don't like it when it's too textured so just try not to go too thick Now just join compound, you do not need to prime it after you slather it on because this acts like a primer. So if you're using the tile adhesive, then you do need to prime it because that is like a really hard um, substance. But for this one, you just put the join compound and no primer needed then before painting. And now my board is completely covered on a very thin layer. I just want to smooth some of these harder lines because like I said, I don't like it when I get a lot of texture. I just want a little bit of texture. So I'm just gently dragging this uh, tool just on the surface, left, right, up, down, just to smooth it out a little bit. And this is our texture and now we have to let it dry until we come back for our next step i'm gonna get the phone and come closer so i can give you a better look of our texture i'm gonna take my gloves off really quick And we'll come back when our first board is dry and ready to paint. Now, while the boards are drying outside in the sun, I want to talk to you a little bit about paints. For making backgrounds for photography, you can use any paints you want. You can use indoor paints, outdoor paints, uh, acrylic paints, any kind of paint you can imagine, you can use it. I will show you some of my favorite paints and why I like these ones. When it comes to photography, I always like to use chalk paint. Chalk paint has a very, very matte finish. And when it comes to photography, a matte finish makes it so much easier to photograph. It doesn't have weird reflection. It's just photographed beautifully. A few uh, chalk paints that I really love are these country chic paints. 
I buy my paints on Amazon. Another really good one is, let's see, where do I have it? I don't have it in here. I have it in the house. It's Dixie Bell chalk paint. That's a really, really good one. And there's also, let's see, you can buy a spray can like this just from your local um, hardware store if you want to spray it. In spray it another one this is the original company that came up with the chalk paint this is jolie paint this is a black one and this is a really really good chalk paint but like i said you can use anything you want i have used in the past benjamin moore uh, regal select on a eggshell finish this is not matte but it's almost matte it's just a little bit of sheen and then I also use the Benjamin Moore Advanced Paint. This one is a little bit more shiny and it's a pain to work with it because this one has drying time of 16 hours between coats. So it will take you like a good two days to finish a board. So maybe we'll put away the Benjamin Moores because like I said, my favorite ones are chalk paints. So for today's tutorial, I will be using this red one because I want to make a background that I will use for some Christmas photos. And then for the texture background, we will use this tone. There's a white and a light medium kind of gray. So those are the paints we will be using today. I'm going to put these other ones outside. Now, when it comes to the top coat, top coats comes in many shapes as well. One of my favorite uh, top coats is this general finishes and flat. Flat means it's very matte, so it will not have a shine to it. So I use that one a lot. And then I also, you know, used sometimes this uh, Rust-Oleum Matte Clear. Or you can buy stuff like Polycrylic. It comes in a can or in a spray can. Or you can get this one as well in a spray can if that's easier for you. Or just use some of this uh, matte finish setting spray and this will work as well. If you're working with a wood or MDF, you can also use wax to top coat your project and this will give you no brush strokes because you'll use a, a lint-free cloth to just buff in the wax onto your paint if you're working with wood or MDF. And this is another good choice to use. My first board is at dry to the touch. Uh, you should leave it at least two hours until you paint it. For me, it's only been I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, but I will paint it anyway. You should not do this. You should wait until it's completely dry. Wait a couple of hours and then paint it. As for the texture one, I will paint it as well, even though it's not going to be completely dry. Uh, for the texture one, you should probably wait 24 hours before you apply your paint if you want to get best results. So I'm going to zoom you on the table and we'll start painting the smooth one. And uh, let's see what we look like. Now for the smooth surface, I decided to go with the Country Chic. Uh, this is the color, it's called Poppy. And if you want to have a really smooth surface, you might be a good idea to take your sandy, sanding block with a 220 grid and give it a light sand just to get away, get, remove all those brush marks and just get a smoother finish. Just very lightly sand it. And then when you're done sanding it, then when you're done sanding it, use one of these uh, tack cloths, therefore removing dust. It's a little bit sticky to the touch. Use one of this. If you do not have one of this, just use a damp cloth and remove all the dust from your surface. So I am going to do that. Now here is my texture background. I just brought it inside and it is still wet. As you can see, it still has that um, darker beige color. And the wider parts is the parts that are almost dry. Um, you should leave yours for at least 24 hours before you paint it. I am not going to do that, so I will just paint it. But like I said, you should just wait 24 hours and you will get the best results. For this um, board, I will be mixing two different colors. I will still be using Country Chic paint. And this color is Pebble Beach. And this white one is Simplicity. So we'll use these two colors. And let's see, I'll have to go get the brush. Maybe for this one, we'll use the natural bristle brush. 
So this is the way my colors look. I don't know if you can tell, I have a white and a gray. And when you work with texture backgrounds, it's nice to mix two different colors, at least sometimes three. Stay with the same, stay with the same colors, like a white, a gray, or a darker gray, or a light pink with a darker pink, or a red and white, and so on. So here is my brush. I will be working with this uh, natural bristle brush, and I will be spraying it with water. I think I should have done before. So now that my brush is a little damp, now I can stop, start dipping it into my paint and start painting. As you can see, I am only getting a little bit of paint onto my brush, something like this, and start working it into my surface. I like to start with my lighter paint, kind of go all over, and then I will use the darker ones where I feel it's needed. And for this one, I don't have to worry about brush strokes. I'm just kind of going in every which direction because this is a texture background, so it doesn't have to be smooth and nice. So just like that, moving all around it. The one reason why I like to work with MDF versus plywood is because the thin plywood tends to warp. So I don't like that so much. But I had this piece in my garage, so I figure I will show you with it. It is very lightweight, so if you have like back problems or you know you don't want to be lifting boards or you're traveling with your boards, you know you can fit a lot more, and they are very lightweight, so easy to travel with. All right, so I kind of finish here with my white, and now you know what? I don't want to uh, dip my brush into the gray. Because I already have white paint on my brush. So I'll go get one of those cups I showed you before. So I'll just get one of these uh, cups and I'll pour a little bit of this gray paint. One tip to not get like drips on your jar. Whoops. Well, I was trying to show you something and I made a mess of myself, but that's okay. We'll work with that. Now I can take this paint and just kind of dab it here and there. Just to give texture to my piece. And this is probably all the paint we need from the gray that I spilled over here. I don't even need the one from the container anymore now. And this will give us like a dual tone, neutral kind of background. You see how I'm going kind of an excess? Just, you know, go around it. Isn't that funny? I pour paint every day. I never have accidents, or almost never. And then you try to do something on camera, and something like that happens. It always happens on camera. But that's okay. It's not the end of the world. So just work it in. And now I feel like I turned my board too gray, so I probably want to add some white paint. I can put my gray one right back in the container because obviously I don't need it. And I can either make it, now I can either make it more gray with a little bit of white, or I can add some white again and try to lighten it. Because I'm in a rush, I think I'm going to add more gray, so it'll be a more gray background with a little bit of white. My initial thought was to make it white with a little bit of gray, but you know, be flexible. You never know what happens in life. I'll take even a little bit more of this gray. And if I would have done the white paint first and then way to dry and then added the gray, it would have been a completely different kind of blending. 
it would have looked different so experiment don't be afraid to play it's just paint if you don't like it that's the good thing about paint you can always go back and repaint it whatever you want on top you can make one of these boards and change color every week i will stop right here and uh, i will wait to see when it dries what it looks like i might not even add another coat maybe this is all it needs we'll check in with you after this dries now this is what my board looks like when it's completely dry no streaks no brush marks it is very very smooth and very very matte this is before i applied the top coat now i'm going to show you how i apply the top coat To seal my paint, I decided to use two different top coats. On one side of the board, I will use wax, and on the other side, I will use a different finish. The wax I'm using is the Jolie wax, and I'm applying it with the Jolie wax brush. Now, to apply this wax, I absolutely love wax because it gives it a very matte, velvety feeling. It's so much better than any other finish, in my opinion, for photography. So I'm just taking some wax on my brush, and then I work it into the wood. And I do that until I'm done with the whole panel. Once I'm done brushing the wax into the board, I will take a lint-free uh, clean you know, rag. You can use an old t-shirt or anything and just really buff this wax into the board. I'll buff and I'll buff until it doesn't feel sticky and it just feels dry and smooth and there is no wax marks. And this is what the board looks after waxing. So velvety, so matte, so smooth, and I absolutely love it. Now for the other side of the board, I decided to go with the General Finishes flat uh, top coat. This top coat goes in milky, but it dries out clear. Make sure you stir your top coat, but not too vigorously. Just go slowly because you don't want to create bubbles. And I will apply this with a foam brush that I spritz with water first. I do this with all my brushes before I start painting. And then I will dip about this much into the top coat and just lay it gently on top of the board. You want to put a very thin layer not too thick, it's better to put more layers that are thin that go too thick. And uh, after I work it into the board just a tiny little bit, I make sure I do a one long stroke from side to side of the board. That way I make sure I don't get any kind of brush marks. Now as a quick recap, this is the first board we did, the printed one that we use contact paper in order to do it. This is the second board, this is the texture one that we use the gray and the white paint and I think this one came out really really well. But the board did warp a little bit as I used very thin plywood. And this is our red one, the one that we just finished and this is my absolute favorite. We will use this in the coming uh, Christmas photo. Now in the next tutorial, we will learn how to make our props to match our background, where to get all these wood boxes and everything all under $20. So stay tuned for that one. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Skylar Ewing. I'll see you in my next video.